Okay, now that I got that other mess all cleaned up and organized a little bit better, let's get into the goodie box here. And uh, right off the top, let's see what we got here. We got a Century transistor and diode tester. And I'm not familiar with this piece of equipment, but it looks like it'll test uh, NPN and PNP type transistors, I'm guessing. And you can adjust the gain over here. Model TT-2. It's a pretty nice shape. Okay, there's one piece. Let's see what we got here. This is a Century in circuit selenium rectifier tester model SRT-1 and it looks like it has a rectifier rating knob right there under the cord and here are my thumbs at it's the test switch for the uh, selenium rectifiers on the opposite side is the on off switch and below that's your pilot light and it looks like the test leads are pretty buggered up on this guy Pretty neat looking piece of equipment. Both of those must have come out about the same time. They're almost identical in design. Alright, what's next in here? Here we have a PACO, I think that's how it's pronounced, P A C O, model G15. Grid, dip, meter, and modulation indicator. And uh, this guy here turns. And it's got another little meter down below there. Kind of a neat looking piece of equipment. Again, I do not have the first clue what that's used for. <laughs> wow, this stuff's pretty foreign to me. Oh, what do we have here? Here is a Mercury in-circuit capacitor tester that tests for shorts, opens, 2 to 40 volt, I guess that's volts, 4 to 450 and high leak, uh, just till eye edges just meet. This must be a green uh, eye tube here. This is a Mercury model 1400. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. What's next here? Here we have a SECO, S E C O, I guess that's how it's pronounced, SECO, in circuit current checker, horizontal output tubes, model HC8, and it tests in milliamps from 0 to 300, and it's got a bunch of different tube numbers here. HJ5, KN6, that must be how much milliamps you're supposed to draw. BQ6, I recognize that one, 75 milliamp. A lot of these tubes I've never even heard of. Of course, I'm not in the TV, so I don't know jack about them. <laughs> Here's the other test lead for the uh, rectifier tester. 
This I do not have the first clue what it might be. Made by Mercury. And it's got red, green, and blue. Okay, that's for pitcher tubes, right? Test the color guns in a pitcher tube, maybe? Looks like the sockets had a little TLC over the years. It's got a couple different sockets. There. 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 And it's got a cord on it that goes back to a plug. Just like that. Let's see. Here we have a electro sub. 10 bic electrolytic electrolytics at 450 volts are complete. Safe substitution. And goes from four microfarads up to 350 and I was reading this the other day it looks like you're supposed to connect it to your electrolytic in question and then push this button down and over to discharge the electrolytic let off and then it'll uh, you can put it into circuit I'm assuming this is for filters bypass isolation decoupling TV hi-fi radio radar Servicemen, labs, and ham radio operators. Oh, this is made by Syncor, okay. Model ES-102. Heavy. It's got all the capacitors in there. And it's got test leads that you connect. What have we here? This is a Exide MFC-2 battery charger, catalog number 95327, to be used only with an MF-2 battery. Exide Industrial Marketing Division, the Electric Storage Battery Company. DC output 14 volts, 7 amps, 0.7 amps. October 10th of 1965. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of dust in this stuff. And it's got a couple funky plugs. Anybody recognize that? And then the power cord, of course. Take the camera now, unwrap this, and see what we got here. Some of the stuff I didn't even really look at very close. It's just a box of equipment. I think I got this whole box for a dollar. Um, this is a Syncor Align a Pack TV Bias Supply. Again, another foreign piece of equipment to me. Uh, this is in DC volts from 0 to 18. Service Instruments Corporation, Addison, Illinois. Interesting. And it's got a power cord on it and then a set of alligator clips. Some of this stuff's pretty neat. Okay, what do we got here? Yeah, we got a can of butane. <laughs> yeah, the freebie, I guess. Ah, uh, what do we got here? This is a Heathkit RF signal generator. I'm looking for a model number and I don't see it. Oh, there it is. It's beneath the uh, dial right here. This is a model SG-6. And it's one of the few pieces of equipment I have that actually has the test probe with it. <laughs> Little, little unit. Somebody has chopped the power cord off though, or wired one in. And it's gonna need some work. Still got a capacitor on there from the last time it was used. This is dummy load. That's a uh, sprig. What is 
the numbers on that. 1,600 volt. 0 0.05 microfarad. All right. Let's get into these boxes because I think that there was a picture tube tester somewhere there. Now, I'm not these, but anybody have an idea what these might be? They look like some kind of a coil. I don't want to mess them up. I'm not sure exactly what they are. Anybody recognize that? I'm not planning on getting rid of any of this stuff, but I don't know what a lot of it is or if I'd even never use it. These look like some kind of adapter plugs for something. Oh, these probably go to a, a tube tester? Or are these for uh, testing? You plug these into the socket on the radio or a TV and then you can plug the tube in and then test different voltages. It says Compactron Test Socket Adapter. Oh, there you go. Read the label, Nathan. You might figure out what it actually is. 36 Universal, 35A5 to a 35L6. Here's a Novar Tall Test Socket. Adapter. There's a uh, 10 pin decal adapter. What's this squiddy looking thing? It's got a tag, it's really hard to read. You might recognize that. Kind of has what looks like a grid cap on there. <clears throat> Another test socket. And uh, those are, uh, I can't think of the name of them. Yeah, those those little tubes. <laughs> They're little tubes are little transistors, guys. I'm not familiar with them. Must be a tube. C, 6CW4 or 21Y. Novar. It's a little tube. Uh, what did they call these things? I slip in my mind. Anyway, let's move on. The video is getting kind of long. I apologize. Here's some rather large sockets that look like they've been doctored together. Abbey Sales Company of New York. Quality components. Kind of neat. This is new in the box, never been used or even played with. This is a head demagnetizer. Robbins model HD-6. $10.10 when it was new. <laughs> Better audio with a Robbins accessory. There you go. Oh, what else we got back here? I can show you a little bit better with a clearer camera. This is that battery eliminator I was telling you guys about. And it 
measures in DC volts, DC amps. <clears throat> this side has an output from 0 to 6 volts or 0 to 12 volts. Uh, here we have a voltage control. This is a model BE-4. Of course we have our on off switch. There must have been a fuse holder on spec. <coughs> Pretty good shape. The cords are just hard as a rock. And I uh, showed you this the other day, but I can show you a little bit better quality video of it now. This was the Heathkit TV alignment generator. And we have a oscillator side and a marker side. Down here we have controls. I think it says horizontal phase. Sweep width. We have a uh, standby range right there. It's off, off AC, BY high and low, standby high and low range. Uh, this is blanking. This is X1, X100, X10K. I'm not sure what that is. That goes from 0 to 10. Amplitude from 0 to 10. This is for the marker side. It says, and range high low. We have an extension jack for a marker and a ground. Uh, power and an output. And a horizontal ground and sweep connector. And I do actually have the uh, connector here for that. Kind of rough looking. This needs a good bath. It's pretty filthy. But it's all there. So guys, there you have it. That's what we got in test equipment. I don't know if I'll even use a quarter of this stuff. You know, we don't test linear rectifiers anymore, but we can't always test one for the heck of it. And uh, some of it's just neat to have. All these little sockets down in here. Bringing back the memories on the true oldies channel with the Supreme Tom J. Michael. And then lastly, all this stuff over here. But there you go, guys. That's it for right now. We'll call this uh, part two. It'll be about 25 minutes all in all. But I know y'all will enjoy it. So, right now from the basement shop, thanks for watching. This is Nathan.